Welcome. My name is Pedro Flores, and today we're going to do another new quick tip. And this time we're going to deal with RenderMan. How to install RenderMan in Yosemite to use it with Nuke. Now, RenderMan comes in different flavors. One of them is actually the paid version, and we have now the non-commercial version. And the non-commercial, we're going to be using it today uh, to kind of... Um, cater towards the more the student masses, right? They're using the non-commercial version. They're trying it out before they decide if they're going to buy it or not. Uh, and they're doing it for their student projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with the non-commercial. So make sure that you go ahead and you go into the download section, register with the RenderMan community, and then go through the process of downloading and installing the free RenderMan version. And then Let's go over the process and how we get it to work with Nuke. So when you go through this free non-commercial edition, you're going to install RenderMan server, and you're going to have pretty much three files that get um, working for you. And the um, the installer from the website is pretty good, pretty straightforward. Um, so it's going to run this, then it's going to go through the RenderMan server and RenderMan studio for Maya. So you're going to get the Maya version of RenderMan of the non-commercial, and then the, also the RenderMan Pro Studio, or Pro Server, sorry. So that's what we're going to work with today. So the first thing that you got to do is go through that process, install RenderMan the normal way, and then we're going to tackle how to get Nuke working on the command line, and this in this case the terminal, using the terminal for it, and then how to set up the variables for RenderMan to work with Nuke. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to start with is to try to solve a couple of problems. Like good compositors, we always are solving issues, right? So let's go ahead and open the terminal, and the first issue that we're going to try to solve is making Nuke launch from the terminal. So you're going to realize very quick, again, I'm in Yosemite, so you're going to realize very quick that when you install Nuke, you probably have to navigate to the location or the, or, or the application uh, path that Nuke is installed on to be able to launch it. Uh, so if you put Nuke in here and you hit enter, automatically it won't go off for you. And what we need is, if we're doing any type of command line rendering and stuff like that, we just want to type in nukex and have the command run uh, and, and launch nuke automatically, right? So in this case, that's the first problem that we're going to tackle. And for that is, there's many different ways of doing this. I'm just going to go with one, right? But there's many different ways out there, and you guys could figure out better ways of doing it. Again, I'm not a, a scripting guy or anything like that. Uh, I'm just a simple guy that likes simple solutions, um, um, to be as efficient as possible. So let's go for one. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and first, I need to edit a couple files. And one of the first files I'm going to be editing it is the profile file located on the etc folder. So for that, I'm going to start with sudo and I'm going to put the folder etc slash profile. Now we're going to do this per session, right, for the user. So I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to ask you for a password. In this case, it's going to be your administrative password. So I'm going to put that in. OK. And it's, it could give me this. And it's going to say hey, the command is not found. And there's a reason for that. Because I only set sudo instead of sudo nano or sudo pico, whatever I'm going to use to be able to edit it. So by some reason, you get something like this. That's pretty much what is happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say sudo. And then I'm going to use nano to use as an editor. Then I'm going to say etc and slash profile. All right. And now you're going to see that this opens. So essentially now that we're here, you're going to see these little things in there already. And those are going to be set up already by default. So what we need to do is we need to add two elements in here. You could add as many as you like. Uh, but I'm going to edit uh, a couple of them. So I'm going to, I already have those copied over. So instead of you seeing me typing or anything like that, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and paste um, the two paths that I have already. I'm going to be using aliases for this to make it easy and fast. So I'm going to be using Nuke 7. So that's the current version that I'm working on Nuke. I have the older version. So by some reason you're working any older version, the only thing that you have to do is just add the aliases here with the version that you want to make sure that it loads. So I'm going to extend this so you guys could see. So essentially, I have this the first alias that is running nukex. So when I'm running the command line and I want to use nukex, I will be able to execute uh, uh, nukex from the terminal. And the same I have for the normal nuke. This all depends on the taste and what I'm using for the specific project. All right, so now that I have this, let's go ahead and save it. So for saving it, you're going to see that we need to use control x first. And then it's going to ask you to overwrite the actual file. So you're going to hit y for yes. And then it's going to ask you, are you sure? 
this is the file name to write. So you're going to hit enter to commit the change. And now we're going to go ahead and say exit to exit from this um, terminal. Now you could open a new shell, right? Um, so let's go ahead and open a new one. So let's close this one very quick and let's open a clean one. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try nuke and make sure that it launches from the command line. So let's go ahead for nuke x. That is the one that we're going to be running with renderman. And you're going to see that automatically now we get nuke launching from our terminal. So the cool thing about this is anything that I do or any any stuff that I'm working on, if it crashes, it's going to give me all that information in here, which is really, really useful. And as I'm working on the command line, so I send this to a specific rendering format and I want to render from the command line, I will be able to do so very easily. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm good. I'm going to close this guy up. So it's going to close nuke as well because I'm based on the command line in the terminal. So essentially the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to solve the next problem. How to get RenderMan to work with Nuke. So for that we're going to use or we're going to modify another file. And this one is going to be the dot bash underscore profile that exists in your on your user. So for this, the same idea as before, we're going to use sudo command. Just be really careful when you're using this. And then we're going to be going ahead and the same nano and then we're going to put dot bash to make sure that you get the name right and then profile okay <clears throat> so now that we have that we're going to hit enter and usually the file is going to be em empty okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a couple of things to this in this one, we're going to go ahead and add all the commands that we're going to be using or all the environment variables that we're going to be using for uh, making sure that RenderMan connects with Nuke or vice versa, right? We, we're able to uh, use the node, the PRMan node inside of Nuke. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit V here to kind of paste my environment variables. Again, you don't need to see me writing all this stuff. I already have them uh, set up. So let's give it a little bit more of space here so you guys see the whole thing. So essentially these are the specific variables and we have the echo command at the top to make sure that we know when the actual bash profile is executing. So when we open the terminal, you should see this little echo command at the top executing this. And the next thing that we have is just setting the environment variables for each of the path that we need uh, in order to get RenderMan connected with the system. Okay, so remember that this is gonna work in the terminal. So it's not gonna work if I launch Nuke through my icon, okay? There's other ways of getting that to work but usually I use always the terminal when I'm working with Nuke, so um, because of feedback and all these other things and the command line stuff. So um, so that's why I kind of use it the most like this. So essentially, now that we have the path set up, you can pause the video at this stage and just copy what I have here. Right now I'm using RenderMan 20.1. All right, let's go ahead and close this. Control X to close. And then I'm gonna hit yes to this uh, overwrite and then enter to commit the change. And then we're going to say exit again. So now that we exit, the next time that we launch this, watch what happens at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and launch the terminal again. And you're going to see in the terminal, now we got the render man variable, variable set up. So let's go ahead and try this out. So let's commit this. So let's start with nuke. I'm going to use nuke x for this because the normal nuke, we won't be able to use the PR man um, renderer. So let's go ahead and use nuke x for that. And sorry if I'm going a little bit quick, so I have a lot of other work that I need to get done, so I'm trying to do this in between that. So essentially, now that we have this, let's go ahead and see if our PR man uh, node works. So hit tap and PR man. Okay, so now you see that the node works. Let's go ahead and create a camera. All right, let's go ahead and connect that in. Uh, we need a scene node very quick, just for now. Let's put a uh, sphere node. All right. We need a card, just a sphere and a plane, the traditional setup, right? Um, so let's take these two and then connect those in there. And then um, the next thing that I need is just connect these guys in. And let's put a checkboard pattern just to have a basic, I know it's a boring setup, but it's the easiest one just to, just to go ahead and test it out. And then let's go ahead and move the camera back uh, very quick. Let's scale this guy a little bit larger. All right, let's set it ZX. Again, this is not a demonstration how to set up the 3D system. 
and let's let's put an access node so it's easier for us to uh, get the camera looking in the right direction. So I'm just going to put in the look axis there, so then I can move the camera around and it just faces wherever that axis is. Okay. So this is uh, things that got modified in Nuke 9 and stuff like that. All right, so let's hit tab very quick. Let's take a look at it. And so far, it doesn't look that nice or anything like that. And that's perfectly fine, right? Um, it's like, okay. But the only thing that you got to realize is that now it is working, right? So we're looking through a render using the PR man uh, render. But it doesn't look that interesting. So let's go ahead and put a light node to just test out the lights and see how those work. All right, I'm going to use a point light, just a basic point light. All right, I'm going to move that point light up and to the side. And right now it doesn't look anything nice, but the first thing that I'm going to do is just load in the shadows, right? So cast out the shadows. And you're going to see that it's not going to show any shadows. So when you're using the PR man node, you will have to activate each of the elements that you want to use. So in this case, I want to activate the shadows, and you're going to see that your point light is casting a shadow. So, so anytime that you do any stuff like that, that's what you're going to have to do. So let's put another light very quick just to test it out. And let's move it up very quick. Let's put it to the side. All right. And just see. All right. So it is working. And it is working fine. So we're good. So that's pretty much it. That's kind of how, how to set up a PR man for a Nuke using the non-commercial edition. Now, if you like RenderMan, just go ahead. And if you're working in production, just have the full one, right? And there's other products out there like AtomCraft that is amazing. Uh, with all these render passes and stuff like that, and of course, render man and so on and so forth. But now you have a little bit more cool stuff that you could use, an extra render. Um, so have fun, all right? Have a good one. Take care. And this is Pedro Flores for VFS Lunchbox. Bye-bye.